Hello, and welcome to James Lessons Express Lane, where we get you out as fast as possible. Bringing the review for Fire Emblem Three Houses. <sighs> Edge Lord, why would you do that to me? Anyways, I've never played a Fire Emblem game before, so this is going to be completely new for me. But if you've played the game XCOM, you kind of know the gameplay mechanics when you're doing the battles. But there's a lot more than fighting. There's the seminars. There's the teaching. There's the running around and exploring the cathedral, monastery area, talking to your students, talking to the knights, talking to the archbishop. Like, there is so much to do where it's like you only get one free day a week. So on this free day, do I rest? When you rest, it brings up your motivation and the motivation of the rest of your class. Do you explore? I was... Nine times out of ten, I chose to explore the monastery because that was the best. You talk to people. You do the fishing. You do the greenhouse. You uh, hit the market to get your stuff repaired, buying more items, buying more potions. Run around talking to people, giving them gifts, giving them lost items. So that way they'd like you more. And, of course, recruit. I recruited a few people, but not everyone that I wanted. There was a couple people I... I... Gave them all the gifts in the world. I talked to them every single week. Refused to join me. Annoying, but alright, whatever. And then... If you choose a female main character called Byleth, you immediately can steal a uh, Sylvain from his house. If you're not in his... If you don't choose his house, because you can choose Dimitri. The golden-haired child who is set to become king. Or you can choose Claude, the very charming young man. And of course you can choose Edelgard, the future empress. I chose Edelgard because she's best waifu. But I'm kind of tempted to go try the Dimitri house. Claude is cool, don't get me wrong, Claude is cool, but I might want to do the Dimitri run. Also, that way I can... Uh, well, mm. then my question is, if you choose a different house other than Edelgard's, does that change what happens in the story? And if it doesn't change what happens in the story and just changes you know, who you start off with as a base class, I mean, that's not... Mm. Although I've heard it would change who lives and who dies later on in the game. So I've been told, but... Not really sure. But again, I once live streamed for 16 hours during my vacation. 16 hours. I was like, congratulations, you made it about a quarter of the way through Act 2 of the game. In 16 hours. What? Mind you, I started on Act 2. This game takes forever to play. But... Unlike some games where it's like, all right, I gotta sit down. I, I can get through an I can get through an hour of this today. No, this game I had no issue sitting there for sixteen hours. The only reason I stopped playing was because, holy sh, it was like five nineteen in the morning. Like, all right, time to go to bed. <laughs> Thankful I was on vacation, so I didn't screw up my sleep schedule that badly. But still, it is definitely a game where you can sit down and play and play and play and play and play and play and play, and play forever. If you're planning on doing a 24-hour marathon, this would be the game for you. Although, word of warning, YouTube cuts off live streams at 12 hours. It's so, like the last four hours of that live stream was gone forever. Sad face. But, unlike XCOM, where it's like, you have a 99.999999% chance to hit, and you miss. This game's actually pretty good, although I did play on casual mode, so there was no permadeath. I'm guessing the hit chances were a little bit higher, but you will miss at very inopportune times, just like an XCOM, but the game's a little bit more forgiving. I will say that. Again, like there's no permadeath, unless you choose that option. You can choose that option, but it's my first time playing a Fire Emblem game. I had no idea what I was going into. It's like, ah, I better keep that off. And somehow, like the game makes you go... I love this character. I will do everything to protect her. Then the character's like, nope, don't even talk to me. I should kill you. 
If I had permadeath, I'd send you out to die. Just so I'd have to deal with you anymore. <laughs> I mean, it's not like those characters did really anything to make me think that. I just... Oh, what was his name? Not Clyde. It wasn't Clyde. I think I'm being able to see, though. Dang, I can't think of his name, but I didn't trust him the entire game. I was just waiting for him to turn on us. And then he didn't. So when I feel a little bad treating you like shit the entire game. <laughs> oh, yeah. But yes, because, no, you play XCOM, it's like, alright, you go to the battles. Well, this, battles is maybe 20% of the game. The other 80% is the teaching, getting your uh, motivation up, getting your camaraderie up. Because it's like, alright, well, you have a C camaraderie, whatever you call it, with this person. <clears throat> when you're standing next to each other and you do a fight, and then they might attack as well. When you get to B, it's going to be a better chance. When you get to A, it's an even better chance. And then there's so much story. There's so much story. Part of it is getting the people to work together. Like, every time they reach a new level, you can go and have them do a scene together. But some of the scenes were hilarious. Because, like, some of the characters don't like each other, but, like, they'll still... Like, oh, our bond is now stronger, even though we still don't like each other. But others, well, meow, chick, meow, meow. You know that's common. <laughs> uh, and I love that I I change the name of the characters. It's like you you can only name your main character, but doesn't mean you can't go. All right, you remind me of Luna Lovegood, so I'm calling you Luna. Oh, you're a foreign exchange student. Your name is not Fez, which is foreign exchange student. <laughs> Or, of course, Edge Lord instead of Edelgard. Hoover. I had so much fun with that. I was like, oh no, you better leave Fez alone. Like, I loved Fez. I loved Luna. Obviously, they got their own pet names because they're awesome and deserve them. And the others is like, no, I'm not taking the battle with me. If this game had permadeath, I'd send you out to die. I might be like, that character didn't do anything to me. <laughs> Ah, this is such a good game. Like, I want to replay it again. But I was like, no, because that's going to be f like 40 plus hours you got to dedicate. Although I actually probably want to take as long. Because I've already played, so I already got the game mechanics down. I already know what I'm doing. And like the first time I was like, well, I want to talk to everyone. I want to hear everything. I want to do everything. If I played it again, it'd be like, meh. I already talked to you. I already know you. But if I played it again, I would have to I would have to get the DLC. Ooh, there you go. I could do a second run of this game, choosing House Dimitri, the Blue Lions. Because it's like Blue Lions, Black Eagles, and Golden Lions. No, not Golden Lions. Golden Bears. Can I remember what the third what Cloud's house is? Son of a bitch. But yes, I would do Dimitri run and I would do the DLC. Ooh, that could be interesting. But right now I'm playing Torchlight and I'll be playing something else after that. Don't know yet. I, I need to stop rambling, but this is such a good game. If you have the Switch, this is a must get. Zelda Breath of the Wild, Tetris 99, Super Mario Maker 2, Fire Emblem Three Houses. You have to get these games. Like, if you want a Switch, those games you have to own. This is definitely a 9 out of 10, 9.5 out of 10. This is a definite must-own. Get it, get it, get it. And like I said, I'm going to stop talking. So, see you guys. Thank you for watching. As always, like, subscribe, comment down below, and have a wonderful day. By the way, I'm cosplaying as Dorothy right now. One of the characters from the game. <laughs>